hey guys how's it going welcome back to my channel uh recently my friend and i tomiwa we made this really long video um answering questions about starlink basically 33 questions you might have about starlink and their answers so where to buy starlink what is the speed of starlink how long did it take um for it to get delivered does it work under the rain questions like that we really took our time to answer those questions so instead of watching this one i would recommend you check out that video on youtube we pretty much covered everything if you have more questions do us a favor leave a comment below the video and i'll get back to you in this particular video i'll be telling you the disadvantages and advantages of well starlink or using the starlink so um that's it that's what this video is about i'm making this video because there are still people out there who are a bit conflicted about you know starlink whether they should get starlink or not bother and um i really don't have a one size fits all answer for you i would say maybe watch this video and then decide you know if you like to still get starlink or not get starlink it's entirely up to you right i'm going to be highlighting the advantages first of starlink you know why you should get starlink and then maybe why you shouldn't bother Another thing about Starlink really is that it really depends on your need or needs, right? If you're someone who wants to get Starlink because, you know, you, you work in nine to five from home and, um, well, you mainly work from home, right? And you just want something stable. Starlink might be fine for you, right? But when it rains, it might not be fine. So be ready to get it back up. Right, but again, like I said, let's highlight the advantages first before we go over the disadvantages, right? So the first advantage of owning a Starlink is the speed. The download speed of Starlink is good, right? It's not as fast as MTN 5G in most areas in Nigeria. If you're in Victoria Island, Lagos, and you do an MTN 5G test, you're pretty much going to get above 500 Mbps right and starlink is doing like 200 and something mbps so mtn 5g is faster than starlink in some areas some just some areas in nigeria not everywhere in nigeria because 5 5g um is not everywhere in nigeria at the moment so so you might now decide hey let me go and get mtn 5g well find out first if 5g works in your area before you get it because you might get mtn 5g and it will be super slow even slower than starlink so for me um i don't live in victoria island but i live in lagos and where i live in lagos i would say that you know being someone who has used mtn and starlink i would say that starlink is actually doing it for me in terms of speed right like you know I don't need 500 Mbps. I mean, if I get 500 MP, Mbps, that would be great. But my 200 Mbps, 170 Mbps, 100 Mbps on Starlink is enough for me to download some things. And also just, you know, watch Netflix. I've had guests come to my house, you know, in the living room, they are watching Netflix. I'm in my office as well, and I'm watching Netflix and everything is working sm smoothly because of the download speed. So you might consider getting Starlink because of the download speed. The download speed is pretty decent. 40 Mbps, 140 Mbps, up to 200 Mbps sometimes. I haven't gotten like 300 Mbps, it's always around that 180 something, 190 something Mbps. The other reason you might consider getting a Starlink, which of course is an advantage as well, is it's unlimited. Unlike most internet services in Nigeria, Africa even, they tell you it's unlimited, but it's not really unlimited. Internet is very, like paying for internet subscription is very expensive in Africa, right? Starlink is expensive, right? You're paying, you're paying like $38, which is like 38,000 era or even more these days, if you convert dollar to like 8,000 era. So it's still high, yeah? But I like the fact that you're actually truly paying for unlimited that's it you know you don't pay for 500 mb or 200 mb or something on starlink you pay the standard um subscription fee and that's it you get to enjoy the service so that's also a good thing 
third thing I'm also going to mention is the stability. I know it messes up in the rain, but when it's not raining, Starlink can be very stable. I'm a recruiter, right? Um, and where I work currently, we hire people like every week and I do interviews every week. I've not, since I got my Starlink, I've not had people complain that, you know, and when I say people, I mean my coworkers, fellow recruiters, candidates I'm interviewing. I've not had someone say, hey, your internet is not, you know, I can't hear you or something because to a huge extent, Starlink is still working fine when it's not raining. If the weather is bad, if it starts raining, you start to see that the latency has gone up and the speed is, you know, down from like 50 Mbps, it can go to like 5 MB. And if the rain is serious, it starts to mess with things. But when it's not raining, Starlink can be very stable. And again, take it from somebody who has used it for a while now. And, you know, it's good. It's really good. I've not had to really do like a backup. Um, also because I have inverter here, right? And if power goes off, the inverter will pretty much take over. So if you have your Starlink on like every now and then, you'll be fine, really. So yeah, that's it. That's really the advantages for me, right? But some, some other people will tell you this is why they like it. This is why they don't like it. My own advantage is the fact that, you know, the download speed is fast, it's unlimited, and it's stable to a huge extent. That have been perfect if, well, if it doesn't act up, in, you know, when it's raining, but it's satellite internet, it's bound to act up when it's raining. So that happens. Now let's talk about disadvantages. Why would I not recommend Starlink to someone who wants to get Starlink? Well, um, if you're someone who is a YouTuber, you need to upload heavy files to YouTube. Starlink is not, is not the best internet to, to, to use for that, right? Get, get MTN 5G or, or something else. Get maybe Airtel 5G or something, um, or any other unlimited internet out there. If it's truly unlimited. The problem with Starlink for uploads, you know, to upload your videos and heavy files to different places is that the upload speed of Starlink is quite low, right? You get like 7 MB upload, sometimes 10 MB, but it doesn't go beyond 20, 25 MB. Like I haven't even gotten like that 25 MB, right? Sometimes it's the upload is like 5 MB. So it's, it takes a very long time for you to upload a heavy file. It could be a one gigabyte file. You're attaching it to somewhere, maybe YouTube or somewhere else. It takes time. It takes time. Fisayo Fusudo has said the same thing. Um, you know, when, when he did a Starlink review. So it's not just me that, like, you know, that has experienced this. There are other people who have also experienced it as well. So if you're somebody who you do a lot of heavy uploads, don't get Starlink. Um, the second thing is, of course, of course, it's not mobile. You cannot carry it around. The Starlink itself is on your roof. They have different names for it. Some people call it the dish. Some people call it this, that, those. On the Starlink app, it's called Starlink. So I call it Starlink. So the one you mount on your roof, that's the dish. The Starlink itself is on your roof, right? And then there's a cable that runs down to your router. Let me show you the router. So this is the router. One cable is from the extension that powers this on. The other cable is from the roof. So this is the router and then the Starlink is on the roof. Now this router is movable, right? I can move it around as long as the cable are, allows me in the house. But the one on the roof has to stay on the roof. In fact, when you're setting it up, it has to be in a very open space where there are no buildings blocking it. If you have buildings blocking it, that's going to be a problem. It will tell you that there are obstructions and because there are obstructions, it won't work well. It might not even work at all. So you have to mount it at the roof of your house. If you have neighbor's buildings that are taller than yours, you have to maybe go higher and mount it or something. So yeah, so it's not mobile. If you're going to be using a mobile version of Starlink, you probably, I don't think it's, um, it's something that they have like a hand handheld version of it. There's no Starlink MiFi. There's an RV version that you can mount to your vehicle 
to drive around, you know, your, your country or something and use it. But there's no mobile version of it. It's just the router and the one on the roof. So it's not mobile. You can't really move it around. If you need to move it around, maybe you're going to your parents' house or you're traveling elsewhere. You have to take it down from the roof and, you know, just all the usual stuff. You have to stow it. Basically, there's a feature on the app called Stow Starlink. Basically, what it does is it folds the device for you so you can bring it down and pack it and then move it to wherever you want to move it. So it's not mobile. I just thought you should know this. Another thing is, of course, rain. When it rains, when it starts raining, your latency, your ping, everything just goes up. The speed slows down because it's satellite internet. Anything that happens up there in the clouds affects it. So because of that, it's not, it doesn't work fine when it's raining. In fact, during rainy season, my plan is to get one of those, maybe do like a data subscription on my phone or maybe recharge one of the five other internet services I have in the house and, you know, and use it instead of the styling because I know that the rain is going to affect it. So keep in mind that the rain is going to affect it. It works fine when it's not raining, but when it's raining, it can completely shut down on you. When I say completely, like completely shut down on you, you won't even be able to browse or do anything. It just shut down on you. Um, another thing, this is not really a big deal, but it's something that is worth bringing up. The frequency noise. When you plug your Starlink to some inverters or some extensions on an inverter or any battery powered, you know, electricity source in the house, the Starlink might start making this frequency noise, like a small high pitch noise. I made a separate YouTube shot about this to kind of like just show you guys what it sounds like. So it's kind of like, mm, but it's a bit high pitched. Um, you won't hear it if you don't completely keep quiet like this. Then you start to hear it. I'm not on inverter at the moment. This is, this is PSG and this is Nepal light. So you will not hear it. But if I'm on inverter at the moment, you hear the styling just doing this mm, sound. Don't worry. It doesn't prevent it from working. It's a general issue. I, there are people on um, Reddit who are talking about it and how to fix it. Some people say you should plug it directly to the power source on the wall. It might fix it. Don't plug it to an extension, but plug the router directly to the wall. It might fix the issue. Some people say you should plug it to a sine wave inverter. Some people say sine wave socket, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't really bother me because um, when I move it away, I don't hear it. But if I put this router here, if I put it on the table here, I start to hear it. It's just a small high pitch noise. So that happens with the router. You can also hear this high pitch noise when you're at home and you turn on some light on inverter, you hear the high pitch noise from the light. So, yeah. So that's it. That's pretty much all the information I have for you. Um, questions like when was it delivered? How long did it take to be delivered and all of that? You'd have to check the other video I made, you know, just detailing all of that. So this is all the information I have for you, you know, concerning the advantages and disadvantages of Starlink. It's, it's not bad, right? It's not bad. You just can't move it around. You know, you can only use it in your home and to download things, to stream things at home, it works fine, right? But if you're looking to upload some things, it will not upload on time because your upload speed is not fast. Also for gaming, if you're gaming and you're streaming some games from some servers, the game might be laggy. If you're also streaming your gameplay and you're playing online with some friends, that's a lot of, you know, internet or data consumption. It might lag a bit. For me, it did lag. It really, really did lag. I had to make an entire video about that one, how it's not really great for gaming. But again, it's good. You can still manage if you're streaming an online game. It might still work fine for you, but it's just not going to be as smooth as you want, especially when you're streaming like 1080p or a game that is on like 60 FPS on like 720 or 1080p. It's um, it's not going to be so great. 
really it's it's just check out my other video about it but apart from that starlink is okay if you're the person who is not really doing heavy stuff you just need stable internet to work with and also watch netflix and have people over maybe do games night the internet will hold it will work fine really it will work fine um the only issue you might have is just the rain but that's it if you have any questions for me concerns or anything feel free to ask me you know just leave a comment here and i'll get back to you thank you for your time don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and i'll see you around take care Bye.